Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about WebSockets. And I'm currently using WebSockets a lot at work, but I didn't have a good understanding on how they actually worked. So I thought maybe I can scale it down, figure out how it works and present it to you. In that way, I will learn about it as well and know pretty much how WebSockets work. So let's switch over to my screen here. And first off, I set up a WebSocket server. In this case, I used Java. Uh, there is a bunch of different implementations online for WebSockets in different languages, and they are all doing it pretty much very much similarly. So here we have a WebSocket server, uh, Java WebSocket 1.5.3. And let's start that up. So now I have a chat server started on port 8887 and the server is started. So let's look at the actual chat server here. Uh, it's some kind of implementation. It has a bunch of standard functionality here. We have the information we just saw here. Send on the connection, welcome to server and new connection and so on. That This will be shown uh, when we open a new connection to this server. And then we will send to everyone that somebody has left the room so we can see which IPs are uh, leaving and which are entering. And uh, we also have these kind of broadcast messages. If we get a message in, we broadcast it out to everyone else. So that's a very good way of doing these kind of chat services. The same goes for if we have a byte buffer message. This is text message. This is more of a byte, uh, buff, um, more of a binary message. And then we have the main function here, set a port and start a chat server, start it up, write out which port it is, and then start listening, reading and writing, uh, broadcasting the message uh, through. And on error, we will throw that error, print the stack trace and so on. And on start, we will say server has started and have a little bit of a timeout here. So a very simple server. How I want to use this now is from JavaScript and PHP. And we can start with the JavaScript part. So in order to have a chat server, I have some styling up here, not super important. I have a chat window. I have a couple of fields, one for a user and one for a message. Then I have a variable here for user and message. I have a variable for the actual chat window. In case of anything written in either the user or message field, if it's enter, then I will send the message. Otherwise, I will set the value of the field into the different uh, JavaScript values. Send message, pretty much create the message with message and user in it, and then send that on the WebSocket. Uh, I also wanted to have this parse JSON because if you run this parse JSON on something that isn't a JSON, it will throw an exception. So I'd rather have this parse JSON that can return false. So if I have something that is not JSON, then just ignore it. Uh, down here, I create a WebSocket. So this is VS slash slash localhost and the port number. So that's the way to create a uh, WebSocket. You could have a specific path here as well. So some, you are speaking over a specific path and everybody in the different connections are using the same path. That's the way you can do it. Uh, if we have an open connection, we will just say that it's open. Uh, you can do more logic here on an open connection. So when you actually get a connection up, uh, you might want to do some setup. Uh, same goes for closed connection down here. I just uh, throw away the WebSocket and say that a uh, connection has closed. You might want to do some teardown there. On a specific message though, I will write the message out. I will parse the data on the message and then I will get this JSON. And if it's not false, so it is actually a JSON message, I will set that message to the chat window. So I set the user, colon, message, and then a BR so I have a new line. And I will also console log that specific data. 
So if we go over to some of my screens here, can open up these. Uh, you can see here that I have two chat windows. I can say Olaf is in the one of them and Daniel is in the other one. And if I say uh, hello Daniel, it should be sent on both. Let's see if I can restart them here so I actually have the sockets connected. Uh, hello Daniel. Uh, nice to meet you. Olaf. So now we are sending messages back and forth and both messages are visible on both ends of this web socket. So this is a very simple solution and if you're working with a website that you want instantaneous messaging and updating of different things then web sockets could be good for you. Remember that you are actually connecting on a port and having a port on the other end so you have a maximum of 65,535 65, ports to open. So this is not something that you want to have in a high user environment. But if you have an admin GUI with less users in, in the system, then this could be a good way to have more interactivity. You can also have, of course, multiple ports if you have multiple users. But that will take more resources, of course. But this is the way to do WebSockets e easily as a chat server. But now I also talked about doing this over PHP. So let's go back to this screen again here and look at the last one here. So what I want to do here is send something with PHP. So I have this user, which is the computer. I want to tell, uh, let me tell you, this is the message and I will send that message. And this is the raw way of sending a message. So first off, I create a socket, a THP socket, and then I connect it to the specific domain, localhost, and the specific port. So this is very simple. Then here I create some kind of noise, just a bunch of random characters. Uh, and these are characters in the low range, so they are ASCII characters just for, for creating something that is easily read. And then I will do a base 64 encode on the, that noise, so I have a key. This key is not really used. You can use it to verify the connection, that you have actually have a valid WebSocket connection, but I'm not doing anything with that. Uh, so what you do is say, I want to get slash on this HTTP connection. I want to say which domain I have. I want to upgrade this to a WebSocket. The connection should be an upgrade connection and the origin should be my uh, domain here. So HTTP slash slash domain. So that's pretty simple, uh, not much to it. Then I can say here that the protocol should be chat. There is a bunch of different WebSocket protocols. But if you're sending just text messages, then chat is a pretty, pretty good one. Uh, WebSocket version 13 is a pretty new one. You can have even newer ones now, perhaps. Uh, and then I send the key. So these are the parameters. Not all of them are required, but most of them are good to send. So I create all these headers uh, and end with a double uh, catch return and send that on the port. After I've sent that, I do two reads. And the first one, I read the actual response of all the headers. But we also know that the chat server, when it uh, got a connection, it sent a bunch of information here. Welcome to the server, new connection and so on. And I wanted to catch those as well, so I can actually have a free lane to send my message. I read both of those and var dump the, them out so we can see what the server is actually sending back. Then I want to send my message. So the message that I sent in here, I will JSON encode that to a payload. Then I want to set some kind of header for this message. This is a framed message with an, a small header and then the data. And the data can be pretty long. It can be longer than a long, but it can be uh, yeah, a bunch of uh, characters. So a pretty long message. 
And so if it's longer than 65,535, then it's a long, so then we will use uh, 64 bits uh, length in the message instead. But we can start with the first byte here. The first byte is a bunch of flags. And we can look at the specification for these flags over here. So the first flag is, is this the last message in this? Or will you send more messages here as more frames? But I say that this, my message is always the last one in this series because yeah, I just send quick chat messages. Then we have three reserved by, uh, bits. And then you have four bits of opcode. That's the first, um, first little part, the first byte of this. And the opcode is what kind of data do you want to send me? And the opcode could be all everything from uh, text to uh, uh, binary. And if you want to connect connection to close, or if you just want to do a ping or pong and so on. So these are the different values that you can send. I will just send the first bit, so it's a text frame. If you send the second bit, it will be a binary frame. But uh, that, that's the opcode. And then you send one bit on the next byte to say if this is a masked message. And then the payload length comes after that. So here I will say on the first byte, it's the last message, it's a text message. And then I will create one packed byte of that. And then here I say that this is a masked package. So I set the first bit and then all the others are zeros and I will uh, and them down uh, or them with the actual payload length down here. So I will get the length and if it's very long, I will uh, uh, take this byte two and or it with all those bits and then send the length. Otherwise I will or them with a few uh, few, uh, fewer bits and then the length. And otherwise I will just or it with the actual length. So this is the implementation in order to set the first bits of this package. Next up after this, we want to send the masking key after the array. So the masking key is the key used to change your message and add a mask to it. So it's just not readable on the line. It's not an encryption, it's just obfuscation. And I have set the masking bit up here, so I will do a mask. So what I do is I create a bunch of random noise here again, a, ran a bunch of uh, binary bytes which is random. I add those as a mask. So four bytes of random. And then I go through the length of this payload and just XOR with this mask. So the first byte will be asked, uh, XOR with the first mask byte and so on until I get to the fourth and then I start over again. So that's why I use uh, modulus here to get the masked byte bit to uh, byte to uh, XOR with. And then I just do a ra uh, write on the socket, close, shut down the socket and close the socket. So this is everything I need to do in order to send one uh, message using the protocol. And if you are a server, you will receive this message, decode it, and perhaps send a message back in a similar manner. So it's a very simple protocol, which is pretty well packed to send data over the line with not that much extra headers and so on. So let's try it. We go over to the um, terminal here, write PHP, send message. It will send it through. What we get back here is first some headers. So it's a WebSocket protocol handshake. 401, we do an upgrade here. We get a specific date. We got this WebSocket accept. So this is the key that we sent before with the server's key. So we actually have something that we can send uh, traffic over, but this is never used. It's just to verify, as I said, this is the name of the actual server. And then the upgrade is a WebSocket. So that's just a bunch of headers. 
and then we get this welcome to the server new connection on slash if we go over to over here we see that we have sent this computer let me tell you to both of our uh, javascript clients so that's the way to send something from code uh, how a server with web sockets is set up and working pretty much and there is a bunch of different implementations out there you can write your own if you want we have looked at the different frames that you send over a web socket and also all the headers that is involved in a web socket connection and we have also implemented a small javascript chat client with a web socket uh, so this was what I wanted to show you today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.